Hello and welcome back to Dano Does Things. My name is Dano. This week's project is inspired by the many walks I've taken this year. I don't know about you, but I have done a ton of hiking and walking because what else is there to do this year? While I've been walking, I've seen all these really beautiful mossy stumps. I don't know what it is, but every time I see a mossy stump, I am just, I'm here for it. Perfect, chef's kiss. So this week I'm going to show you how to combine needle felting techniques and super simple embroidery techniques to make a really cute needle felt painted mossy stump. This is the stump that I made. You can see it has these really nice embroidered details. The techniques aren't super complicated. It's mostly just the layering of the different mediums. That is maybe tricky to think about at first, but you could totally do this and it's gonna turn out so cute. I really enjoyed designing this one and I hope you like it too. So let's get started. All right, for this project, you'll need a small embroidery hoop and a small piece of craft felt. Now, if you're used to embroidery, the front of your piece is often the side of the fabric that is flush to the hoop, but in this case, you want it to be the opposite so that the felt can rest directly on your felting surface. You will need four colors of embroidery thread with corresponding colors of wool. Of course, you'll need needle felting needles and an embroidery needle as well. The first layer will be the light brown slash tan wool, and you'll want to lay it down in a circular pattern. If you have a multi-needle tool, it'll be best to work with to lay down this larger area. Next, we will use the darker brown to create a thin ring around the lighter brown to be the beginning of the tree stump's bark. When you take a piece of wool, gently pull it to stretch it into a long, thin section. Once your first layer of felting is down, you can use a single needle at an angle to tighten up your felting. Now it's time for the first layer of embroidery. Starting with the light brown, we'll use a super simple backstitch to create concentric circles to mimic the rings of a tree. I'm just gonna always thread my needles off screen to prevent you from having to witness the struggles. Back stitches are fairly simple. Following my super fancy infographic over here, you just bring your needle up at point B, then down at point A. The next stitch comes up at point C and down at point B. The next stitch comes up at point D and down at point C, and so on and so forth. Keep on going until your circles fill up your tree stump. Next, we'll use our dark brown embroidery thread, which is already conveniently threaded on our needle. Using the same back stitch, but in a more sporadic way, we'll create the outer bark. Our next layer will be needle felting again, this time using the dark green wool to start adding the moss. Start sparingly and add more until you are satisfied. After you have enough dark green, add a few lighter green highlights. The last layer is back to embroidery. Starting with the dark green thread and then the light green thread, it's time to make some French knots. Now, they're a lot easier to make if you have some kind of embroidery hoop holder. In fact, I'm hoping to do a DIY embroidery hoop stand video soon, but I'll give you the basics. Bring your thread up through the back of your fabric and pull all the way through. Next, wrap the thread closest to the fabric around your needle three times. 
Keeping tension on the thread, place your needle close by but not exactly on top of where your thread is coming through the fabric and pull through. Now, I could probably do an entire video on perfecting French knots and I definitely have not perfected them myself, but luckily moss doesn't need to be perfect. Continue adding the French knot details. And then you are done. A super textured multimedia piece to be proud of. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you give it a try. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.